Hello and welcome to the garden. So, a bit of a sad tale today. Johnny is a little bit broken. So, don't, this is not going to be a video about my health woes. So, don't switch off yet. This is a video about some changes that we're going to make in the garden and, and how we're going to do them to save me a little bit of effort this year. So, I have mentioned on a couple of previous videos that I've got a heart problem and this year I am struggling a little bit with the garden. It's one of the reasons why, wherever possible, I like to use a, a no-dig method because it is a lot less physical effort. Just spread the compost on the top of a bed, leave it to the worms and other soil organisms to deal with it for me. And wherever possible, that's how we like to grow. Now I'm stood in one of our borders here and the soil in these is not nearly as nice as in our main veg beds. We're surrounded by gravel pits here, so there's a lot of stone in the soil. In the main beds, we've sieved all of that out years ago and it, they've had tons of compost on them and that's improved the soil and, and they're lovely. The soil in those is great. In the borders here, it tends to be pretty compact and still very stony. So the soil isn't brilliant here. And that's why in some cases I have to at least do a bit of loosening with the fork, if not some proper digging. So um, these are always a bit more work for me. Now, what we've decided to do, because it, it's, all get, it's all a little bit challenging for me this year, is um, put part of the garden to sleep. So where I'm standing, this border down to the fence and the first, the first block to the right there, we're gonna cover all of this and we're not gonna grow anything here this season. So I had planned to be filling this. This had lots of brassicas and legumes last year and various leafy things that had a big patch of chard and so on. So I'm going to have to scale back what I'm sowing and growing. But actually, I've already got the most important things well in hand. So most of our alliums are dealt with. I do have leeks that um, I'd like to um, prick out, pot on and eventually plant out into one of the main beds. But our, our main crop of onions and shallots and garlic that's all done. I've got the pepper and chili plants, well, they're more or less ready to be potted up or planted in their final positions. They're quite big plants now. The grafted tomatoes are all done. So all of the things that are on a, the top of our list of must grows, they're already, they're already underway or in the ground. So we've got plenty going on here already. So I think I could probably live without the extra work of planting up and preparing this border here. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to take a bit of the workload away. So this video is not really about that. It's about how I'm doing it so that when I come back to use these again in the future, the soil is in perfect condition. So there are three points really. It, it's about feed, light and water. So obviously if I'm not growing in the soil, something else is going to. So if I'm not cultivating it, it's going to be full of weed. And in fact, it is full of weed. If I just step out of the way, you can see we've got the old brassica plants there. They're flowering. I've, I've left them at the moment because the bees are enjoying them, but they will have to come out today now because we are clearing this, this bed. Um, and it has plenty of weed here because we haven't worked much in this lately. We have hoed it off a couple of times as we've been taking crops out, but there's tons of weed. So all we need to do with this to get the weed under control, just exclude the light. It's as simple as that. But there is one really important point, and that is it's much better to exclude the light with something that is permeable so that the water goes through because the soil needs water. And if you, if you cover it with, I've seen, I've seen beds covered with like old compost bags or plastic sheet or 
um, tarps, stuff like that, which will shed the water. And that, that means that the soil underneath is going to sit there and get very dry. And a dry soil is really a dead soil. It's not good. And it's something that one can often find in the greenhouse or polytunnel if you're not cultivating part of it through the winter and, you, and you're not watering there, of course, because you're not growing, then the soil becomes dusty and dead and horrible. So it's always a good idea to maintain at least a little bit of moisture in the soil so that it doesn't, doesn't go like that. Um, so I'm not gonna cover this with plastic sheet. I'm gonna use a weed membrane. So it's a woven fabric. It, it's made, it's still plastic, but it's, it's, it's woven and it's permeable so that water can seep through it. So the soil underneath will remain nice and moist. And that third point is of course that the soil's not gonna stay in good condition unless it's fed. So what we will do here, we'll pull the big plants out. We will take care of any nasty weeds. So this part of the garden where I'm stood right now used to be part of the chicken enclosure and there were a few things that they didn't eat and therefore got established here. Nettles and brambles being two examples and I can see we've got a little bit of both of those still in this border. I've been getting rid of it and it's not too bad now, but we'll, we will remove those because they are nasty and, and just putting a cover over the top, it takes a long time to deal with, with nettle and bramble and they will run and pop up somewhere else. So we will dig out the nasty weeds, maybe, maybe pull off or, or hoe off any, any large weed growth here and then we're going to put down a thick layer of compost and we'll cover that with the membrane and that will keep this in perfect condition for quite a long time at least a year and maybe if i wanted to leave this uncultivated next season i might peel back that membrane spread a little bit more compost but anytime you want to take a bed out of use. If you're, if you're fit and healthy, of course, you can grow a green manure, some field beans or some clover or, or something that's going to improve the properties of your soil. And at the end of that period, you, you can chop and drop or cut the top growth away and compost it. And anyway, you're, you're doing something valuable with the soil. And of course, that's better than covering it but if you get to a point where maybe you're too busy to manage the whole thing or maybe you've taken a crop out at the end of summer and and you don't plan to put anything in until the following summer it's not a bad idea if you've not got too much time or not too much energy to maintain it any other way then covering it is a sensible thing to do but before covering it putting down some organic matter it's going to feed those soil organisms you, you'll come back to it and find that you've got a really healthy soil there ready to grow some great plants and not a dead dry dusty patch which isn't going to support healthy plant growth at all anyway that's basically it that's today's job and I'm not even going to do most of this because my wife is coming down to give me a hand and we've got a friend popping over at some point to help out as well. So I think between them, they'll be clearing this and doing most of the heavy work. So that is good for me. Actually, I'm just off to try and put together some temporary compost bins. Now, we have a bonus material and the roof blew off of our outbuildings and I, I still haven't fixed that. That is a job I'm hoping to tackle this week. Um, we ended up with quite a few sheets of corrugated iron. So I am planning to knock up some compost bins with those sheets of iron. I'm putting a different roofing material on a lightweight one so that when it does fly off again, if it flies off again, it's not gonna cause the sort of damage that those sheets can do. Anyway, 
I will pop back at some point and show you what we're doing. But that is the plan for here, just to mothball part of the garden and keep it in perfect condition for when we want to come back another time and plant it up. Well, it's actually a few weeks since we cleared the main plants out of here, or I should say, my wife and a friend cleared the main plants out of here and all the perennial weeds are gone. There's been some regrowth of some of the annual weed, of course. Everything's been growing like mad in the last few weeks. Plenty of rain and nice warm temperatures. That's all been sort of roughly hoed off. I don't have to be too fussy. The perennial weeds are out, so the annuals will die off when we cover them anyway. We've got some horse compost here, a few piles of it. We're gonna need more. All I'm gonna do is just rake that out over the surface so that there's a reasonable layer covering this couple of inches and that is then going to feed this soil as we cover it and leave it kind of dormant so yeah I'll come back when these are covered so this north border has now been completely covered and as well the little bit to the right there so I can be quite content now that this isn't going to turn into a complete ruin while I can't get round to maintaining it and I think that can sometimes be a bit of a problem because very often if you're a new gardener you might take on a, a big allotment and find that it's all a bit much to manage in one go and, and while you're trying to work on one area the area you've just cleared starts to produce weeds again and and that's all going wrong and it can all get a little bit too much it's very easy for us gardeners to take on far too much and find that we can't do it all so i think it's far better to recognize when you've got that kind of situation and and cover that ground whether it's with well of course it can be with a green manure but whether it, i'm thinking more of covering it with card or this type of weed fabric or even newspaper what whatever it is cover that up keep that weed growth down so that you're not you're not storing up an extra burden so this would have turned into a complete nightmare for me because i didn't have the time to cultivate this space and while i'm not growing stuff in it the weeds are taking over so that's not bad and Okay, I'm doing this for health reasons, but th this is not uncommon. Sometimes other stuff in life gets in the way of our hobby. So I think at some point, most gardeners will have a situation like this. And it's really great if you're aware that something is coming up where you're not going to have the amount of time that you would normally spend in the garden. Get those beds covered keeps them in really great condition. There are a few other changes that we're gonna to make to the rest of the plot, and I'll show you one of those. So in the rest of our west border here, we've got, uh, what have we got? French gray shallots. We've got some dwarf broad beans along the back. We've got celeriac in. We've got onions of various sorts, some spring onions. Then we've got pepper plants towards the back and then we've got space for some of the winter squash. So I am using this this season, but I think we're gonna cover this border in exactly the same way. We will, as we clear these crops, we will spread some compost, either our own or then some more horse compost, and we will get that weed fabric down and, and we'll just take this entire border out of cultivation for who knows but at least at least one year I would have thought and probably next year we're just going to use the main veg beds and I think I'm going to have to think a little bit more carefully about what I'm going to sow and grow obviously I've, I've just taken out a pretty large area of the garden so I'm not going to be growing as much as I did before so I'm, I'm starting to question 
which crops are really the most important for us and that's always an interesting question actually because there are there are different ways of looking at it so the kind of the economical aspect so I don't know let, let's say something like an onion it's cheap as chips to go and buy a great big sack of plain old onions from your greengrocer why, why bother growing them but on the other hand the onions that one can grow when you pick some really great variety so this year I've got again the Rose de Roscoff I've got the Tropia Rossa onion and you just can't buy onions like that from the greengrocer or, or your regular supermarket they're not available and those I think are quite important to me not not for economic reasons because onions are they're a cheap crop simply because those onions are so much better than anything I can buy in the store. So I've got to go through that sort of process and think about which of these crops I could live without, which of these I would be most happy to buy from the supermarket. And that way I will be deciding what to drop and what to keep. I mean, potatoes are another one. It's quite a bit of work even though I've moved to growing entirely in pots now, it's still quite a bit of work. Do I really need to worry about main crop potatoes? The answer's probably not. But on the other hand, the first earlies, the, the true new potatoes, if you can't get a potato like that from the shop, even, even right in the height of their season, new potatoes from the supermarket are frankly dreadful they, they, they just cannot compete with a homegrown potato so I know that early crop is going to be really important to us still but maybe I don't need to worry so much about the main crop potatoes and I'll look possibly for to keep going with the the smaller pots and the uh, the early potatoes there's a lot to think about like that there's one other area of the garden where I'm going to abandon it so under the mesh here, we have the roots, and or we should have the roots, but that's all a bit of a disaster. I sowed these a long time ago, and I put in, I can't remember how many rows, I think it was six rows of the parsnips and two of carrot, and I, <laughs> I was very careful when I sowed. I checked the soil temperature, the conditions were fine, absolutely no reason really for bad results I think one carrot appeared from all that I, I sowed thinly I wasn't I didn't want a lot of thinning to do later but even so one carrot that is pathetic and I don't I don't think I've got even 50% of the parsnips here and I don't have a single row that is complete so I knew this was a problem some weeks ago and you know it is still possible to sow them now and it's it was certainly fine to sow them when I realized there was a germination issue but I didn't do it and I've decided just to scrap that this year I won't replace the parsnips I uh, I will probably sow some more carrots because that that's a slightly more important crop for us than the than the parsnip although then again, it's a pretty cheap crop to buy from the supermarket, albeit with rather less flavour. But yeah, this is another area where I'm going to just cut my losses, save myself a little bit of time and hassle. I will go through this and weed out the actual weeds and the one or two parsnips that did bother to germinate. I'm not sure what went wrong here I did keep this watered or at least I watered this a number of times during that first let's say three weeks or so when you you expect those seeds to be starting to germinate but April was really dry and we've had some rain recently but April was shockingly dry and and it may be that I let the soil dry out a bit too much our soil is so sandy here and if we don't put enormous amounts of 
bulky organic matter in it, it, it will dry out ever so quickly. And of course, in these beds, for the roots, we don't add any more organic matter. So these last had brassicas, and th these won't have had these won't have had any organic matter for more than a year. So that leaves that soil a little bit prone to drying out. I mean, it has to be like that because if you if I spread a whole load of compost on there, that, that soil's probably going to be too rich for those roots. I'll get lots of forked, nasty roots coming up like a bunch of fingers. That's, that's no good at all. This is, this is great for growing the roots in, and we had good results last year, but I think it was potentially a little bit dry. Either that or the seed was just rubbish, and I have had a lot of rubbish seed to deal with this season, so maybe that is also a factor. But anyway, I'm making this kind of change all around the garden, and at some point I will probably do a video towards the end of this season on the, the changes that I'm making and what crops I've decided to carry on with next year. The most important things for us are always going to be the, the glasshouse and polytunnel crops, the chilies, peppers, aubergines and the tomato. So those things we are definitely doing. They will be the very last things to be cut. And then of course I like the the garlic and the the onions and shallots and so on. But anyway, that is all for this video a few changes in the garden. Even though I'm cutting back on stuff, I'm hopeful that I will still have plenty of material for more videos, but that is all for this one. Thanks very much for watching and bye for now. <laughs>